The White House is now confirming and defending President Trump's involvement in drafting a statement about his son's June 2016 meeting with a Russian lawyer. The initial response said they primarily discussed a program about adoption of Russian children and that it was not a campaign issue at the time. It did not mention that the meeting was billed as a way for the Trump campaign to gather damaging information about Hillary Clinton. White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders acknowledged the president's role yesterday. The statement that Don Jr. issued is true. There's no inaccuracy in the statement. The president weighed in as any father would based on the limited information that he had. Uh, this is all discussion, frankly, of no consequence. But the president's attorney, Jay uh, Seculo, told CBS this morning a completely different story last month. There sure. are reports that President Trump, while on Air Force One returning from the G20 summit, signed off on the original and incomplete statement from his son. That is not correct. He did uh, not sign off on no, it or see it. D Donald Trump, um, I, was, I wasn't on the aircraft, but my understanding was that this was completely done uh, by Donald Trump Jr. and his lawyers. The president was coming back from the G20 as this was going on, as you know. Mm -hmm. So my understanding is that, very clearly, that this was Donald Trump Jr. and his lawyers put together a statement ser serving the interests of their clients. So I understand what they did, and it was not the president was not involved in that. Rachel Bade is a congressional reporter for Politico, and she joins me now on the set to talk about a smattering of this and that, but we're going to start with this confusion about the initial statement in regards to Donald Trump Jr.'s meeting with that Russian lawyer. Was the president involved? Was he not involved? Well, apparently he weighed in. To what degree? We really don't know what it means. His lawyer said something completely different last month. And then yesterday we heard from Lindsey Graham, and this is what he had to say. The last thing you need to do is reinforce the narrative if you're not candid and honest about what happened. I hope I read that properly, but essentially he was saying, look, we're confused and you're just reinforcing this narrative by changing the stories every other day. Yeah. What are you hearing from lawmakers? How frustrated are they, if they are? They're very frustrated. Okay. I mean, the drip, drip, and we're, as you saw Graham come out and talk about the White House's changing story, they, people are starting to come out and say, listen, you guys need to get your facts right, find out what was the timeline of things, and come out and be honest and transparent about it. Yeah. It's not only interesting that Originally, the White House was saying Trump did not weigh on, in on this, and now they're saying he did. But the way he weighed in on this, right? So his advisors apparently were telling um, Trump and Don Jr. that they should be transparent about this, come out after they found this email to say exactly what happened. Instead, it was the president himself who said, no, let's say this was specifically an adoption issue, and let's say this had nothing to do with the campaign. Mm -hmm. This was the president's idea. Mm -hmm. And while it's not illegal to lie to the public, to lie to the media, it certainly looks like they're covering something up, and this could put him in legal jeopardy with right. the special counsel. And when you hear Sarah Huckabee Sanders say, well, it wasn't inaccurate in any way, when we know it clearly was inaccurate because there's a huge omission, it just adds to that confusion, I would think. Absolutely, right. and I would say, it's interesting, yesterday, um, Jeff Flake, a senator from Arizona, um, always never been a big fan of Trump, but never has never really been blatantly criticizing him. He yeah. did this incredible op-ed where he basically said, saying lawmakers need to be tougher on Trump. He was saying, my fellow Republicans, we've been sort of glossing over this for so long, but we need to start standing up for our own principles. We need to start calling you know, a spade a spade. And this was one thing he talked about, was we gotta be honest with what's going on and really press them about what happened. Right, okay, so I wanna ask you about this uh, bill to uh, reinforce sanctions against Russia. Mm -hmm. We heard from the Vice President Mike Pence saying that uh, the President's gonna be signing this very, very soon. Uh, Rex Tillerson said he has every intention of signing it. What is the holdup? I'm pretty sure this is some sulking that we're seeing right now on the mm -hmm. part of the president. Mm -hmm. So this is a bill that 100% um, driven by congressional Republicans and Democrats coming together saying we don't like the tone of the White House. Russia is not our friend and we need to basically push back against them. So this ties the White House's hands in terms of releasing sanctions or giving uh, Russia sanctions relief. So. The White House came in sort of covertly over the past few weeks and tried to water the teeth down, or mm. I t declaw, I should say, this right. bill. They were unsuccessful Mixing in doing this. Mixing of metaphors there. Right, yeah. yes, definitely. <laughs> um, it's early. Um, but they were unsuccessful. They failed, um, and Congress sent this bill overwhelmingly bipartisan support, and Trump is not happy about it, you yeah. know? Uh, he wants to make friends with Russia. This is not gonna help him do it. He doesn't have to sign it. No, If, uh, in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if he chose not to, and it just, 
went into effect. Basically, there's um, a law that if if the president does not veto or sign a bill within X amount of days, and that day will be August 9th, it will go into effect. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see that happen. Mm, very interesting. All right, on to health care. There's so much going on. So we have heard from the president over and over again in tweets and other, and other statements. Maybe we should just let the Affor Affordable Care Act fail, let Obamacare fail, and then we will build something from scratch again. Mm -hmm. But then we've been hearing something new. Republican Senator Lamar Alexander announced plans to start working on reinforcing Obamacare, which would be the opposite of letting it fail. What do you know about that? So um, it's kind of interesting to see the change of dynamic on the Hill. Basically, Trump threatening to blow up Obamacare sooner um, is bringing Republicans and Democrats to the table to talk in a way I have never seen on the Hill on health care. Mm -hmm. um, asked me about a month ago. I would say there's no way we'd see anything bipartisan go on. However, Republicans and Democrats are both very concerned that if Trump stops these payments, which are basically halt any sort of payments to insurance companies for people who are low-income individuals. These people are going to be hurt, and this is on Republicans' watch. Mm -hmm. They do not want him to do this. But the president says maybe it'll bring people to the negotiating table. That's all I want to do. So I, we're seeing in the Senate right now the two top health care lawmakers, Republican and Democrat, coming together. I talked to um, a couple of the top, more moderate Republicans in the House who are doing a very similar proposal um, where they would make sure Trump cannot blow up the insurance markets the way he's threatening to. Um, and I mean, it's just interesting to see the change because just a few weeks ago we were talking about partisanship, Republican-only health care bills, yeah. and now we're talking about bipartisan health care bills. Well, there goes my crystal ball. But then again, I threw it out a long time ago. Yeah, I know. It's pretty unpredictable. <laughs> it has been, yeah, exactly. Rachel Bay from Politico, thank you so much. Thank you.